Okay, so I am going to start, and Patty, take your time. Todd will help you out. Uh, I'm going to start in Varasana. So if you'd like, you can place a blanket on the mat, and that's just for comfort of your uh, tops of your feet, fronts of your ankles, and your shins. I'm going to use a folded blanket to sit on top of. If that's not enough for you, you can use a block as well or instead. So once you get your prop set up, you come in front of your prop that you're going to sit on. Bring your inner knees, your inner thighs together. Make sure your 10 toes are extended straight back behind you. You'll bring your sacrum and your tailbone down. Press through your feet and your shins as you bring your outer hips inside of your inner heels. Perfect. And then move over one side to the other, hand to the lower buttock, upper hamstring, rotate out. Do this on both sides. Also see that the knees are even and that both of the center of the kneecaps move out towards the top of the mat. You can use your fingertips into your mat or into your blocks or your blanket and you'll press and lift your side rib cage. Keep your belly button drawn back. Because it's in this position, it's really easy to arch the low back. So you want to bring your sacrum and your tailbone down. Bring your hands to your heart center. Keep your chin parallel to your mat. Close your eyes. Begin to center yourselves here using your breath. Move your inhalation through the nostrils. Fill the outer rib cage. Fill into your inner costal muscles with your inhalation. As you exhale, empty the lungs completely. There's heaviness at the very tops of your shoulders, moving them down away from your ears. That weight is moving through the backs of your upper arms and down into the tips of your elbows. The palms of the hands are together, but they're still very light. There's still passivity here. I'll chant Om, join in or just listen. Oh. Exhale your breath, bow your head, bring your chin to the groove of your neck. Keep your breastbone lifted towards your chin. Bring your hands down to the very tops of your legs. Gently press into the tops of your legs, center your head. Your eyes are closed here a moment. Next exhalation, you can slowly open the eyes and release the hands. Very good, guys. Go ahead and I'm gonna bring one block behind me. One block behind me, right at the sacrum here. And I'm going to lift the side rib cage, take the left arm, left hand across the body to the outer left leg, bring your right arm behind you, twist to the right, twist to the right. As you're twisting your spine to the right, guys, I want you to really draw down into your mat with your left shin bone. And then exhale, release, gaze back to the center, Lift the side rib cage, twist to the left. So now the right arm comes over. You draw the outer left leg in with your right hand. Bend your left elbow, lift your spine, twist to the left. Now go into your right shin bone in the top of your right foot. Draw down, lift your spine. Use your right hand to tuck your outer left leg in, twist. And then exhale, release. Your gaze can come back to the center. Very good, guys. So from here, what I'm going to do is move that block out of the way. And then I'm going to lean over to the right, put my right hand on the mat, and I'll extend the left leg out in front of me. Keep the right knee bent. Stretch the left leg out in front. Press down through the top of your right foot. Lift your spine. If you need a strap, use a strap. Otherwise, Come forward, grab your left foot with one hand or two. Don't lean to your left, guys. Really draw down through your right shin bone, top of your right foot. You'll inhale and lift your side rib cage. Exhale your breath. Use your right shin bone, top of your right foot. You bend your elbows out to the sides and fold. 
So really, again, press through all five of your toenails on your right foot, and then inhale, stretch up, and exhale, lift up. Lean over to the right, bend the left knee, bring it behind once again, extend or straighten the right leg, so extend it out in front. Again, make sure that your kneecap, that left kneecap is forward. And if you look really closely, guys, you may notice that one of your knees is moving further out than the other, right? So you wanna lean over and pull the right hamstring muscle back and then move your torso forward. Press through the top of your left foot, reach out, grab your foot, do a big dorsi flex of your toes so that your five toes really stretch back towards you. And you'll feel your calf muscle elongate. So you want your calf muscle on that straight leg to get really long, move your spine in and up and fold. Elbows out to the sides, if you can fold, fold. And then inhale to look up and out in front of you and exhale, release. Lean over and straighten the, the knee. So extend both of your legs out in front of you. Go ahead, bring your hands or your fingertips to your, your mat or your uh, blocks and take your bottom, lift your bottom up and kind of pull your bottom back and up towards your low back and then sit. Good. So again, you don't, you want to have this sensation, pretend that I'm there and then I've taken my hands and I'm pressing these center heel bones back. Do that again, guys. Lift up, press the center heel bones back. Take your outer legs, your outer hips back. Great. And then lift the side body, stretch the arms out, grab the feet, or you can use a strap, but inhale and lift up, really move your side ribs up. Exhale, your breath, fold. Now as you fold, wing your elbows, not just out to the sides, but see if you can lift them up towards the ceiling. See if you can lift the tips of the elbows up, then as if they're gonna touch the ceiling. Yeah, extend them out and then stretch them up. Good, move your spine in, move your spine in, your hamstrings back, roll your sitting bones towards your low back. Inhale, stretch up and then exhale to release. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm gonna, just so you guys can see, I'm gonna turn to the side. But this time, and this is, again, just so you have a visual of what I want you guys to do, I'm gonna take one block in front of me. You can still use your strap. And I'm gonna place the heels of the feet on the block. And then notice, before I do anything else, my hamstrings and sitting bones appear they feel as if they're moving in this direction towards my feet. I don't want them to move there. I want them to go here. So what? Press your feet, lift your bottom back and up. Keep that, come forward, either grab the feet or use the strap. But dig or draw your heels heavily into your block. Lift your bottom and see, maybe this will help. Give a little arch of your low back Come seated, keep your torso forward, grab your feet. So you give a little bit of an arch of your low back as you lift your bottom up. Lift your, that's it, do it one more time. Good, lift the bottom up, draw the heels down. Now take the hamstrings and the sitting bones up towards your low back, keep your torso folded in, grab your feet, good, or your strap. Great, lift your spine and then exhale the breath, fold. Now as you're folding, really draw your toes back. Engage your inner knees, rotate your inner knees down. Good, 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 good. And keep a lot of kind of heaviness, good, in the feet as if someone's pushing your feet back towards you. And then inhale up, great, and exhale, release. Perfecto. Perfect. So from here, guys, you can move your block or whatever, however you're going to do that. And let's come into Adho Mukha Varasana, our child's pose. So I'm going to start sitting on top of my heels. Now, when you do this, bring the front of your ankles against your mat. In other words, you don't want space here, right? 
So you want to draw the tops of the ankles, tops of the feet, bring the femur bones down the outer hips back as you come into Adho Mukha Varasana. For this first one, you know, in Iyengar Yoga, we say we've got a working child's pose, right? And this is a working child's pose, meaning you're trying to get that length in the spine. So press through your feet, press through your shins, walk your arms out here further than you think you can and push your upper leg bones down. Good, 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 good. Bring your femur bones down, guys, and also use the tops of your feet. Now, in reality, they tell us that your shin bones should move up away from your mat. Try that. See if you can lift. Don't lift your feet. Don't lift your bottom. Don't lift anything other than energetically and nothing else. Pull your shin bones up and bring your thigh bones down. And then exhale. Let your elbows bend and rest. So if you want to let your arms stay out and, and rest there, you can, or you can fold the arms or however you want to let your arms and, and shoulders rest. Go ahead and bring your gaze up, lift your elbows, lift your inner wrist. Lift your bottom one time and then press your bottom back. Keep your chest up and you'll walk your arms out a little bit deeper. Now, once you get here, look at your, your hands, guys, and go ahead and shift onto your knees. And I want you to shift forward until you feel, watch the weight in your hands and your upper arm bones lined up over your wrists. Separate your feet. Take your toes down, keep your knees bent, but lift your knees up, stretch your side body. <clears throat> keep the knees bent, let's keep our knees bent. And with your knees bent, press the tops of your leg bones back. That's it. Feel like you're opening your armpits, bring your shoulder blades in, move your chest towards your thigh bones. That's it, Patty. Good, now keep your bottom lifted up. And keep this uh, sensation that your sits bones are rolling down towards your low back. Keep that. And with an exhalation, the only thing you're going to change is straightening the knees. If you feel your uh, abdominals or your chest become hollow, keep the knees bent. That's great, Esther. That's great. You guys keep moving your upper leg bones back and then push with your hands like you're gonna push your yoga mat forward. Now with your feet, drag your yoga mat behind you. See if you can drag your mat behind you. And exhale, shift forward some, come down to the knees and another Adho Mukha Varasana. And then guys, go ahead and bring your head and your gaze up and let's go ahead and come standing and we'll do another dog pose. But my favorite way, no one else's favorite way except mine, is to use a blanket, a small roll of your blanket, just the edge and make it really tiny. Um, I think sometimes we think that if we make it a really big roll, we'll have a, a easier time holding it, but no, it just makes it worse. So the smaller, right, the better. Roll it at the top, look down at your feet, make sure they're even, inhale, lift up, exhale, fold. And once you fold, stay in this fold for just a moment and bring your fingertips down. And I just want you guys to kind of rock forward into the balls of your feet and then see if you can extend your outer feet back Stay in the balls of your feet and bring your heels down. But try not to shift your weight back. Try to keep your sits bones lined up over your heel bones. 
Good. Don't come forward yet. Keep your outer knees stretching back, your outer legs stretching back, using a, some fingertips. We use a little bit of weight in your fingertips. Now shift into the balls of your feet. Let your heels lift up. But really draw the balls of your feet down. Lift your heels up. Let your heels lift up. And that lifts the arches and the ankle bones. But shift deeper. Go deeper into the balls of your feet. Now, draw your outer feet back, your calf muscles down, your heels down. Keep your fingertips down for weight. Weight. Weight is in the fingertips. Now, see if you can, again, let those outer feet stretch back. Move your shin bones towards your kneecaps. Move your kneecaps towards your quadriceps. That's excelente. Now lift your breastbone towards your chin. Wonderful. Now stay as you are with your hips and your outer legs. See if you can walk forward into dog pose. Don't bend the knees. Don't let your upper leg bones go forward. Walk your arms. Walk your hands forward. Lift your chest. That's it. That's it. That's it. Lift your breastbone towards your chin. Great. Great, 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 great. Perfect. And then exhale, come down. You can let your blanket fall and then just come down onto your feet. And then we'll move our blanket out to the side. Yeah. So you can move your blanket out and just kind of come kneeling. And I'm going to grab my two blocks. And I'll come up with the right foot. And then take the left leg back. Now, when I do this, I want to really push. So I go forward and then watch the left heel. Draw the left heel back until that right shin bone moves back. So I'm going to do it again. You guys watch. So from the top, you'll come with your right foot up in front. Just watch for a moment. Come into a lunge, left leg. Lift it. Tendency is here, but lift. Now, keep watching, guys. I'm going to go forward. And you notice that right knee moves over the right toes. Watch. I want to really press through my left heel and let that left heel move that right shin bone back. Okay? And then we'll, we'll go from there. It's going to be more fun added to this. But as we go, as I think of it, just kidding. Now, as we go. So once you come up, go ahead and shift your weight forward into your right foot. Let your right um, uh, knee move over your right toes. Do that. Yeah. Now, listen, guys, you're doing this by letting your moving, rocking your weight onto your left toes. Rock your weight onto your left toes and notice what happens to your right shin bone. Then keep your left toes forward here and then press back into your left heel as firmly as you can. Now, as you stretch that left leg, you should notice your right shin bone moves back. Your right shin bone, that's it. Use the left foot. Use the left foot. That's it. That's it. Make sure your front knee is at a 90 degree bend. And I want you guys to lift up through your chest. So now make sure that your shin bone is right over your ankle, right over your ankle. Exhale your breath, bring the, begin to bring your left knee down to your mat using your inner left growing. Your inner left growing comes down first. Inner left growing comes down first. And then the left knee. Then take the top of your left foot, press it down. Keep using your hands to your block. And then you want to get length back here. So take a look. And if it's here, you want to see if you can lift up, take that left heel back, and then bring the left knee down. So make sure that you're at that almost a 90 on the front. Press through the left foot. Press through the left foot. Even your left toe now, press down. Come to your fingertips. Lift your chest. Take your arms up, palms face behind you, lean back. Lean back here, guys. Reach up through each fingertip 
back of your arms, lengthen up, try to straighten that left leg as much as you can. Bend the front knee if you have to, bend the front knee, bend the front knee, good. Palms of your hands behind you, lift up, stretch back, lean back, and then release, good. Good, 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 good. So from here, you'll bend that left knee deeper, bring your right foot back, right knee back, bring your left foot up, and remember we start in a lunge. So here, and then we come forward into our toes, do you see? And then to get that left shin bone to move back, you really lift your thigh bone, lift your kneecap and press into that right heel. You'll feel that, really press, that's it. Make sure your front knee is at a 90 degree, press back into your right heel and to your left knee, 90 degree angle. Good. Internal rotation, so the outer right thigh rotates in towards your inner right thigh. Really press through your heel, good. Now you can slowly begin to bring your back knee down. You're gonna think of that inner thigh, upper growing, leading this. Yeah, that upper inner right growing is leading this descension, right? And then to straighten that back leg a little bit deeper, you could do a couple of things. You could walk your front leg forward and then lean into it a little bit. That's it to see if you can really open up the back front leg. Good, 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 good. Do an internal rotation on your back leg. Come to your fingertips. Lift your chest, move your shoulders down, good. Next breath, see if you can stretch the arms out in front and then bring the arms up. Palms go behind you. That's it, you'll feel the backs of your upper arms. Feel the backs of your upper arms. Lean back, but press the top of your right foot. Great, and then exhale to release, perfect. Perfect. And from that release, guys, keep those blocks and let's step up between the blocks. And the blocks are right outside of the feet. The feet are wide, so they're a little deeper than um, hip distance. Put your hands on your blocks with your elbows bent. Shift your weight into the uh, balls of your feet. Stretch your big toes forward and fold. But bend the elbows and kind of push the blocks forward some. That's it, that's it. And shift, shift your weight into all four corners of your feet. Good, 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 good. Few more seconds here, guys. Push down with your hands. It's almost like you're gonna take those blocks and you're gonna push them forward off of your yoga mat. But you put weight there. And then let's inhale and look out in front. And then exhale, bring your hands to your hips. And inhale your breath as you come up, perfect. Perfect, perfect. And I'm gonna move my blocks to the side for a moment. <clears throat> and let's use a strap for this one. So I'm gonna do Utita one, Utita Hasta Panengustasana one, and then we'll see where we can go from there. So one, I've got a loop in my strap and I'm gonna stand left hip to the wall, just enough for the fingertips. I'll bend the right knee up. And when I bend the right knee up, guys, I wanna really bend it up into the chest, place the strap, extend the right leg. Left hand to the left hip, okay? So left hand to the left hip. You can start with your left fingertips at the wall if you need the balance if you need the balance. If you need the balance, you can put your left fingertips onto the wall. Now, when you bend your knee, and I see some of us, um, and, and I, I don't know, maybe this tightness in the hips maybe, but sometimes we do this, we kind of lean forward and then bend the knee, do you see? What I want us to do is stay in Tadasana, watch, and bend the knee up to you and then place the
the strap. Okay, yeah. Try to get that knee to bend up, lift it a little higher, Molly, toward. That's it. Now extend. So once you get your strap there, you get your knee high. <laughs> Not your knee high socks, but you get your actual knee high and then extend your leg. Now, if you can release the left fingertips from the wall, do that and place your left hand on your left hip. Good. Feel your foot. Feel your inner left foot, feel your outer left foot. Can you guys wing your elbow, kind of bend your elbow and pull your right foot up a little bit higher? Good. And then exhale, release. Perfect. Perfect. Now, remember, this is a tough one because this is an internal rotation, meaning even when your leg goes up, so watch from the side. Even when your leg goes out, this thigh is going down, this thigh is going back. The top inner leg's going down, the bottom inner leg is going back, okay? So try on your other side, right fingertips maybe, but stay into dasana. So try not to bend around, try not to take your torso to your knee, but rather your knee to your chest. That's great, that's great. And then once you get that knee there, push into the strap, straighten the left knee. It extends straight out in front of you, kneecap to the ceiling. Stand very tall on your right leg, guys, so you don't bend your right knee, but you move into your foot. Good, use your spine, that's it. Make sure that your bottom toes are forward or turned in, but not out. Good, keep your inner thighs together here, guys. We're gonna see how long we can hold this, not really, but we gotta go as long as the other side. So then give a slight bend to your elbow and lift your foot. That's great, that's wonderful, perfect. And then release. Excellent. Okay, so we'll do it one more time. Let's see how I wanna do it. Remember that, let's see, if you have a wall, let's do this. Let's lift, stand in front of the wall, bend the right knee up, put the right foot on the wall. Do you see like that? And I want to bring it down so that I've got these hips compacted. I'm going to keep lifted, reach forward and grab the toe, then lift up. Okay. We should have did that the first time, but oh well. <laughs> live and learn okay so face the wall and bend the right knee up to the chest keep it bent extend the right knee right foot to the wall then push the wall to straighten the knee push that's it you guys make sure that bottom leg is straight and it's right underneath your hip your left leg is straight right underneath your outer left hip push the wall Lift your chest, reach your right hand and right arm out, grab your right big toe, first two fingers. Now, pull against the toe, straighten the right elbow and lift your chest, lift your chest. Great, 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 great. And then exhale, release, perfect. Perfect, so watch what I saw. And I don't appropriate, pro Proprioception. Proprioception. We forget about our standing leg, and, but that's really the basis and the anchor of the pose, right? So if there's not strength in your standing leg, your standing foot, or if there's a miss or, or um, a misalignment or a rotation is not correct. So what I saw on that last one was something like this. Do you see what there's no focus on this bottom leg? But that bottom leg, those foot the toes go forward and that hip does this. So both of your hips draw in and face the wall as you go forward. Don't round your spine. Okay, so try it on your other side and, and make sure to check your bottom foot, your bottom toes, that those toes go forward and that leg is straight. Now lift your left knee to your chest can even pull against it if you want and then extend it and place your left foot on the wall 
Place your left foot on the wall. Good, good, good. Now, drop, roll your outer left hip down. See if you can square those hip points to the wall. Square the hip points to the wall. Lift your side rib cage. Reach out with your left hand and grab your left big toe. Straighten both of your knees, guys. Both of your knees, good. Now pull against your left big toe and lift your side ribs. Great, great, great. And then exhale, release. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe we'll do something fun after this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that one again using a strap or not, right? So you can grab the big toe or you could grab the outer foot. I think I'll use a strap because a lot of us may be using a strap. So same thing, except I'm not using the wall. So I'm gonna bend the right knee up, kind of pull the knee up, lift the chest, Extend the right leg out in front of me. I'm going to see if I can bring this more parallel to the mat, release the strap or the foot, hold the right leg in place. Okay. No. <laughs> Happy New Year. Just kidding. Okay. So I figure we should be really strong since we made it through 2020. So we could do it. <laughs> okay. So bring your right knee up. And you can use your strap or you can grab your big toe or your outer right foot, but it's the right knee to the chest and then extend the right leg out in front of you. Good, 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 good. Left hand to the hip. Guys, tuck your hips in. Gotta keep that maintaining of your outer hips coming in. Good, good. Now point your toes and release your strap or your foot. Hold your right leg parallel to your mat. That's it, two, good. Point the toes, straighten both knees, three. Internal rotation, four. Great, great, internal rotation, and then release. Good, 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 good. So we've gotta keep this internal rotation or the compacting of your hips, the tucking in of your hips. So when the hips tuck in, But if the hips are, you know, one hip's doing one thing and the other's doing another, uh, it doesn't work as well. So think of this outer thigh moving in toward your inner thigh. So switch sides and then we'll stop. We'll stop this. Okay, so bend the knee. You can pull it into the chest, grab the toe or the outer foot or the strap. Extend the left leg out and lift up through your chest. So make your chest very uh, big and then extend. Now make sure that you're standing right over your hips. You've got both knees straight. You're compacting your outer hips. Release your strap, point your left toes. See if you can hold your left leg out in front. Two, great, three, good guys, four, perfecto. Five, release. That was excelente. Very, very good. Okay, I'm gonna come to the center of my mat. This doesn't really make sense, but let's see if we can, it doesn't make sense at all, but let's see if we can do uh, TT Basana. I know. Well, I hear Diana's voice in the background going, oh no. <laughs> okay, so you can use blocks too, but watch. And this is fun, even if you don't get the balance of it, it's just the idea, right? So what I'm gonna do is have a good distance of my feet a little wider than hip distance. And again, if you wanna use block, they'll just be right behind you. And I'm gonna bend my knees and bring my arms underneath me, just like this. Now, what you if you're not using block, bring your hands right behind your heels, watch. Then we're just gonna sit. We're gonna sit and then we'll engage the perineum. You guys watch for a moment. And then we'll just lift the bottom up, kind of push with the back of your arms, do you see? So, Instead of here, we'll push with the hands, push with the feet, draw the perineum up, almost puff the kidneys here. And then we'll rock into the heel of our hands and see if we can get our feet to lift, okay? So we'll take our time, okay? 
So your feet are really a little wider than your hip distance, that's it. And then bend your knees and lean your torso over and place your hands behind your heels. That can be against your blocks, that's it. Now if it's your blocks, so Patty, turn your fingers, that's great. Now put that weight in the heel of your hands and sit. So you've got to bend your elbows, guys. Bend your elbows so that you can bring the backs of your legs down onto your arms. That's it. Bend your elbows. Bend your elbows. Now, don't lift your feet, but I want you to push with your hands, lift your perineum, and bring your bottom so it's more parallel to your yoga mat. You may have to use your core muscles to pull your bottom parallel. Pull your bottom. Now let your bottom drop again. Now engage. So watch. You'll, you'll go here and then you'll here. And we'll come back here. And then we'll push and lift here. Do you see? So we're just trying to figure out what muscles we actually need to hold this pose or to get anywhere near it. Okay. So again, hands are behind your heels, either on your block. Now, if your hands are on your blocks, here, watch, let your bottom come down and then press lift and then let it come down and then lift up. But you've got to use your hands as well as your core. Let's do that six times, okay, six times. You'll let your bottom drop, let it relax then push your feet and lift your bottom so it's more parallel, six times. Good, press, hold, good, come down. That's it, Patty, good, good, good. After your sixth time, guys, after the sixth time, you'll see if you can shift your weight back into the heel of your hands, lift your perineum and bring your feet away from your mat even if it's just slightly. Okay, fall on your bottom and that's it. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? See how fun New Year's Eve yoga can be. Oh. Listen, it doesn't matter to me, really. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, not just to me, but it doesn't matter if you can never, ever, ever, ever get your feet away from your mat. What matters is that we increase the strength that would allow us to hold this pose, right? So in order to do that, you could start really small, like here. You see, so I'm, this is a lot of work. This is actually more work than the actual pose. And so once you get that pulling of the belly and engaging the abdominals, you'll figure out how to rock back into the heels of your hands. And that's what allows your feet to come up. What allows your feet to come up is you rocking into the heel of your hands, you get it? So even if the heel of your hands are on block, so watch. I'm still really using, I've got to use the heel of my hands. If I don't use the heel of my hands, my weight shifts forward into my fingertips. And then all of my weight goes forward or backwards, you see, because it's not held. Okay, that's enough of that. So just sit on your mat. <laughs> And we'll bring the soles of our feet together. Ah, very good. And this Baddha Konasana, you'll just open the soles of your feet to the ceiling and then rock from side to side. So I move to the right and I bring that right knee down. And then I extend through that inner left knee and try to get it down as I'm still leaning to the right. And then I come center and I lean over, let that right knee come up and watch. And then I extend out, see if I can get it grounded while I'm leaning to the left and then come back to the center. Good, good, one more time. So whichever side you wanna to go to, bring that outer knee down 
and then extend until the knee, the outer knee that is lifted comes down as well. Uh, and then come forward. When you come forward, extend the inner thighs to the inner knees. Try to reach your kneecaps east and west. Bring your chin to the groove of your neck and come as close to your mat as you can. Keep your spine in. That's great, guys. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And then exhale, release, come up. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. And we hadn't done this one in a while, but it seems kind of fitting. Um, last night we did um, wall pigeon. That's not this. If those of you that were here last night going, uh oh, no, it's not that, but semi konasana. So, I'm going to use a little blanket at the back of my mat. I'm going to use a wall and a block. So I've got a, and you just need, really you don't need a wall. So if you don't have one, don't worry. And I'm going to bring one block to the back against the wall. And then my blanket is just scrunched up. You see, it's just kind of scrunched just for my knees. Now I know what y'all are thinking. Y'all are thinking, yay, this is much better than wall pigeon. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna come over and kneel in front of my wall and in front of my block. And then I'm gonna take my knees out, inner knees and place my inner knees on my scrunched up blanket. I'll bring the soles of my feet together and instead of this, this is tough. You wanna drop the sacrum down, push your hips back, come onto your belly. Keep your inner ankle bones grounded. Now to get down, you can actually move forward, bring your torso down so you can let your bottom go forward. That's it until you can get your torso down and then you push your legs back. So inner knees do this. Inner thighs, inner knees do this. I know you guys are like, well, yes, we know that that's what they should do. But my inner knees have a mind of their own. They're not willing to do that. So use that and, and, if, and Andy, I hope you're okay. Okay, um, use the blanket. I know that we're afraid because the blanket, you know how you slide on the blanket and it kind of takes your knees where you don't think you want them to go, which is way out to the side, right? But, but, the, <laughs> but it's okay, it's, it's New Year's Eve, just kidding. Now, once you get down, <laughs> Kelly, can you see me? So look, and if you say you don't have a wall and you're like, well, darn it, I just can't do this at all. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> not true what you would do would be do it like this without the wall which is even tougher right so do you see my knees want to i don't want them close i want to let them extend out push your bottom back take your bottom back against the wall and you can pull your belly button up towards the ceiling you can even use your own hands to give that external rotation but you guys can come forward. That's it, uh, Aiden, great. That's it. And like Carolyn is doing, I don't know if you can see, but drawing those upper leg bones towards the wall, really. Great, great, wonderful. Now, go ahead and come up to your hands. And when you do that, your inner thighs, so you're here, your inner thighs have to, and your hips come up as well, so you're here. Straighten your elbows, rotate the inner eyes of your elbows forward, move your sacrum in. So do like a mini back bend. Take the tongue over the chin three times. <sighs> Again. <sighs> Last time. <sighs> and then release. <sighs> Goodbye, 2020. That was our release. That was our let go. <laughs> okay, guys, perfect though. So you can move your blankets just to the side and let's come down onto our mats 
and I'm going to use just one blanket for now. This is like the Tootsie Roll blanket fold. And I'm gonna come reclined. And when I do lift up and bring that blanket right underneath the sacrum, right? And then I'll take my strap. And again, I wanna really lift and tuck here and I'll bend the knees in. Remember we work here. Now, when you bring your knees in guys, what we're trying to avoid is this, you see, I know that's an exaggeration, but when you bring your knees in, I'm gonna wrap the strap around the feet and take the legs up. And when I do that, I don't wanna go here, but I wanna pull those legs so that the ankle bones line up over my hips. I want to open the chest and draw down on the strap. Okay. And then we'll see if we can eventually release that strap. But let's get ourselves in position <sighs> for something. Just kidding. Okay. So, Patty, pull it down a little more, your blanket. No, no. Get, just pull your blanket down towards your bottom. Perfect. A little bit more, teeny bit more. Perfect. So that blanket is right underneath your bottom and it's to give you some length and some space. Do you feel that once you got your blanket there, it kind of opened up the lumbar spine, right? It gave a little more space at your lumbar. That's perfect. Perfect. Oh, Mr. Darcy's not, he's like, not this again. Come on, mom. Yeah, the dog is like every day. <laughs> okay. Mr. Darcy, isn't that a cute name? Okay, yeah. Now, once you get here, pull your knees and bring your strap around your feet, extend your legs up, and then really work to draw your outer hips away from you. Pull down on your strap and you want to bring your ankles over your outer hip bone. That's it. That's it. That's it. You guys really lighten your grip on your strap and move your thigh bones back. Move your thigh bones back. So move your femur bones away from you. Let's see if we can move our thighs. Move them back, Aiden, away from you. Your legs, no, the other way. That, yeah, a little more, a little more. Perfect. 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 So you guys keep your legs extended out, press through your inner feet, press through your inner knees, extend your inner thighs. Slowly release your strap. Good, slowly release your strap. Take your arms over your head. Relax the muscles in your face. Keep, continue to pull your abdominal wall towards the floor. That's it. Now make your arms very long, moving your torso opposite of your legs. Moving your torso opposite. Again, see if you can relax the breath. See if you can relax the breath. Point your toes. Let's do a point of our toes, a full ballerina point of your toes, and then reach up. Nice, Aiden. Good. Let's make sure the outer hips are there. A few more seconds here. Reach out into your fingertips. See if you can make your arms a teeny bit longer. Everyone move your legs away from your torso just slightly. And then grab your strap, bend your knees and release. Perfecto. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna do that again. And this time I'm gonna move the legs. And we're going to do, uh, let's do 2020. Just kidding. We'll do, <laughs> we'll do three. Just kidding. So <laughs> three is good. Okay. So watch if you can see, and if you can't just listen. So this blanket is to keep this length here. So that big scooping right? And the edge of the blanket should be at the back of the waist. And then I'll take the legs up again. And this time you don't need your strap, but if you have to have it to get your legs there for a moment, do that. But watch, I'm going to bring the legs right over ankles, over the hips, take the arms up. 
and I want to really pull that belly down and watch. I'll go 90, 60, 30. I'll come back 60, 90. Okay, so let's see. If you're thinking, well, there's just no way I can do that with my knees straight, you can bend your knees and the backs of your lower legs are parallel. And you'd go here, here, and here. Think of that holding the feet up. Okay, so now we are gonna do more than three, but we're not gonna do 2020. <laughs> so go ahead and take your legs up, really extend through your feet, not 20 either. Take your arms over your head if you can, if you can. You can also hold the edges of your yoga mat. Point your toes and let's take our legs to a 60 degree angle, 30 degree angle, 60 degree angle, 90 degree, 60 degree. Let's go down to 30, pull the belly button down. Come back to 60. Come back to 90. Again, go down to 60. Really use your feet and use your arms. Bring it down to 30. Use your arms really here. And then bring it back 60, back to 90. Come down to 60. Make your legs as long as you possibly can. I promise that lightens the legs. Bring it down to 30. Make your legs long, it makes it lighter, makes it lighter. And then come back to 60, come back to 90, bend the knees and release. How many was that? <laughs> Too many? <laughs> oh, five, Esther said five. Thank you, Esther. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stay on this blanket and my knees are bent. I'm going to take my strap around my right foot, extend my right leg up, extend down onto my left leg. I'll grab with my right hand, take my right leg out. And I want to really press that outer left hip onto my blanket. That outer left hip can roll onto my blanket, but take the leg up first. It's the right leg. That's it. Extend that leg up, that's it, but press and bring your left thigh bone down. Press your left femur bone down, good. Take your right toes, turn them to the right, right kneecap to the right. Slowly take your right leg out to the right. Focus on your left outer hip. Focus on your left side. Focus on your left outer hip, grounding. That's wonderful. Do a little, make it that outer left hip and, and left thigh bone a teeny bit heavier, guys. Do it with an exhalation. Use your left foot if you can. Good. Now, bring your right leg up. Keep your left toes and left leg where it is. Switch the hand. Take your right leg over to the left. Take your right leg over to the left. As you're doing this, pull your belly button to the right. Draw your belly button to the right. Take your gaze to the right. See if you can rotate that outer right rib down. Outer right rib down, guys. And then move your outer right hip towards your left foot. Bend your elbow, the one that's holding the strap. Bend that elbow to see if the back of your left arm will touch the mat. That's it, Dana. Thigh bone to the back of the legs. Thigh bone to the back of the legs. Good. And then bring your leg back here to the center. Good, 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 good. Now I'm gonna really keep this left leg long and I'm gonna see if I can pull this right leg in, in. But I wanna ground the back of that left leg and I wanna really straighten the right knee. Keep in mind here, guys, that your right thigh bone is going away from you. Your right leg may be coming in, but your femur bone is going away. Focus on your left side. Proprioception, bring your left leg down. Find out where your left leg is in time and space, right? And then release, perfect. How oh, well. 
rest for a moment. We didn't do the left yet. That was just a really long right side. <laughs> like 15 minutes. No, it wasn't that long. But anyway, we'll, we'll move on. So bend both of your knees. I think that the, I don't know, the eye-opening side of this to me, doing it this way, is uh, when I straighten my right knee. So gonna take the belt to the left leg, extend the left leg up, and then really I can feel work at when I straighten that left knee and bring the back of that left leg down. You still open up your chest. You still press into your strap and see if you can move your thigh bone away from you. Left femur bone moves away from you. Left knee is straight. Now you can turn your left toes left, left knee left. Focus on your right side completely as you take your left leg out to the left. I want your focus really on the grounding and the drawing down of your right side. Good, straighten your left knee guys and see if you can take your left thigh bone towards your left hamstring. Bend your left elbow up and out, pull your left foot closer to your left shoulder. Good, so your hip goes opposite of your foot. Your hip, your outer left hip goes opposite of your foot. You can tuck your outer left leg in. Now bring your leg back. You're gonna switch the hand that holds the strap. Take your left leg to the right. You're gonna take your navel to the left though. You're gonna really rotate the abdominals opposite of that left foot. So remember, these are stomach churning. They call them stomach churning or core movement, core poses to increase the strength of the core. So really draw opposite of that foot via the abdominals. Good. Bring the femur bone to the back of your leg and then see if you can ground that right leg completely. Good. And then bring it back here to the center and you'll pull this leg in. Remember, now it's your left leg. And when you're doing this, you're trying to get this leg in, but the thigh bone away. So yes, you're trying to get the leg in, but you're really trying to move this femur bone towards your left hamstring muscle. Make your right leg longer. Really press into your right leg, your right foot. Good, 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 good. And then exhale to release, perfect. Go ahead and bend both of your knees, put your feet on the mat. And I'm just gonna lift the bottom and pull that blanket up right underneath my lumbar. And then I'll come reclined on that and you can keep the knees bent or you can straighten the knees. But now your blanket, it's not under your bottom. It's right there uh, above the plumber's cleavage. So it's at your lower back. Yeah, yeah. And then you guys, if you're comfortable straightening your knees, do that. You stretch your arms out to the side or over your head and really pull your belly down. Good, 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 good. Great, perfect, guys. That was really excellent. I don't know where all the time went though. But this really was a fast year, wasn't it? Wasn't it a quick year? No, I think it was quick. I just must mean I'm getting older. I mean, it was long, but it was quick. It was quick and long. <laughs> Long and quick. Okay. Ah, forget about the fun. Now, listen, what I'm going to do, this is kind of interesting, but this does remind me a ton of uh, legs up the wall without, anyway, keep your blankets where you are, where they are. And I'm going to go ahead and maybe hold on to the blanket, I mean, the mat, or I could just keep the arms over the head or do whatever you want with the arms. But I'm going to bring my knees in. And I, again, I'm going to keep that kind of that arch and hips going away. 
and then see if you can just extend those legs up and watch the shoulders of chest roll down. Keep those legs so that they're about parallel and then press your outer hips away. Press your outer hips, guys. Outer hips press away from you. That's it. Let the chest lift towards the chin and then pull the legs back. Wonderful. Wonderful. Do you feel that little bit of an arch in the low back? The breastbone moves towards the chin. Bend the knees. Release. Perfect, guys. Perfecto. And I'm just going to lift my bottom up and move my blanket out to the side. And I'll take my block and do Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. So one block. High level, if you can get it there, bring the block to the sacrum. Now, for me, the hardest part is to control those outer hips. So if you feel like you need a yoga strap maybe on your thighs to help control that um, rotation of your legs, because that does determine the position of your low back, right? So if you know, and I know some of you, this, this is a work in progress, right? So you're using your block on a lower level, which is very much acceptable, you see. So you always want to do uh, what is more or what feels more comfortable or more right for you. And, and, and there's plenty of time to increase the space, I mean, the, the height of your block as you practice, you see? So the more you practice, basically what I'm saying is if your block is at a lower level now, don't worry, don't, don't feel anything about that except this is a work in progress. Now we know the body doesn't like to be rushed and one thing that it, it doesn't tolerate is to be forced, right? Now, remember here, you guys go ahead and you're here. Let's see if you can grab the outer edges of your yoga mat and really rotate that uh, bicep muscle out and down towards your mat. So you're kind of turning that bicep out and then push with the tricep or the back of your arms and move your chest up. So that's right between your shoulder blades. Wonderful, wonderful. And then guys from here, let's go ahead and let's bend our knees. If your knees were straight, go ahead and bend the knees and feet on your mat. And let's lift both of our feet up. Keep your knees together and your feet together. And then again, this is a little bit higher than we were before, but you wanna bring those legs back and lift your chest. That's by using the backs of your arms. You're just using the backs of your arms. You wanna move your chest up towards your chin can even bend the elbows if you need to. Press the backs of the arms, lift the chest. Sometimes we interlace around that block, but you wanna keep moving your breastbone up. You wanna keep moving the tops of your shoulders down. And then bend your knees. And let's see if we can drop our feet to our mat, but they, that they touch at the same time. Ah, perfect. And then lift your bottom, grab your yoga block. You can put the block kind of on the belly, holding it with your hands. Tuck your hips, your bottom down. At the same time, take the arms over the head. Oh. And then press into the block with the hands. Extend the knees one at a time. Bring the belly down. See if you can really open up the front of your legs. That's great, Dad. That's great. That's 
great, that's great. That's wonderful. And then release, perfect. You can release the arms. Ah, remember how we bend our knees one at a time and you drag the heel to the sit bones. And then you can lift and tuck your sacrum tailbone, bring your knees in, hug your knees to your chest, any movements. And then roll over to your right and come up and we'll prepare for our inversion. So we've done a, a bunch of stuff, not really, but kind of. And uh, so what you can do for your inversion is maybe you want legs up the wall or maybe you want headstand or handstand or scorpion or any other pose. But for legs up the wall, you can also practice that pose using your blanket. Now, and I don't know how this is going to work, so let's see what happens. So your blankets can be a little bit away from your wall. And I think that we're, most of us are afraid to roll into this, uh, but let's see, including me. Now I'm here and then I'll, uh, press my weight back. So that's if you're going to use, or if you're going to do legs up the wall with blankets. Oh, that's so tough. Or again, shoulder stand, uh, headstand. Uh, you can move your blankets closer, sit to the wall like this, and then turn, put your legs up the wall and recline. That's an option for legs up the wall. Or do headstand. Now, if you're going to do headstand, interlace your fingers so that your fingers face you. Yeah, good guys. Really get a good grip of your head for Shirsasana. There you go, Pat. Get a good grip of your head for Shirsasana. See if you can take your most of your focus in headstand to your outer wrist, your outer hands, your elbows. See if you can bring that weight even there. Nice, nice, nice. Don't rush headstand or don't, um, don't, don't overwork. I think for me, when I first started practicing Shirsasana, I overworked it. I overworked it. And I had multiple teachers come by and say, relax, <laughs> relax. Few more seconds, those of you in Shirsasana. And then those of you in headstand can come down slowly. You can also stand on your feet to release your shoulders and your neck. Now, those of you in legs up the wall, stay there for a moment. You can stay in legs up the wall for a moment. Those of you in Shirsasana, another few moments of just relaxing at the sides and the back of the neck. And then you guys coming from standing and folding can fling your hands or fingertips on your mat, bend your knees. You'll keep your gaze on your mat as you come seated. Ah, very good. Legs up the wall, you guys can take your time, but bend your knees and prepare to come out of the pose and you can kind of push away from the wall and then roll over to your right. And I'm gonna take these two blankets and I mean, you can use blocks or you can use nothing really. But 
I'm gonna put these two blankets in front of me and I'll separate my legs, my feet, so that my heels kind of come to the outer edge of my mat. This is karmasana. And my bottom hamstrings and sitting bones still go up, so I get that, right? Inner thigh rolls down. I'm gonna wrap the arms underneath my legs and kind of squeeze the knees in. And then this blanket, and it can be more than two, can even be a block, but I'm gonna move them a little for because what I wanna do is place my forehead against the blanket. So that's Kermasana and your 10 toes are straight up towards the ceiling. So turn, yeah, it's like your center heels are down and then your knees rotate in towards your thigh. Rotate your knees in, keep your toes up, bend your knees, everyone in Karmasana, that's it, Esther, that's perfect. Your knees are bent and you're kind of hugging your heels or your outer feet, that's it, that's it, guys. That's wonderful. Again, take a little bit of a focus on your uh, inner knees and see if you can roll them in and down if you're doing a, a set to banda. A few more seconds, good, keep the knees bent. Wonderful. Wonderful. And then you guys can bring your gaze up and then come seated, but keep your props here. Keep your props here. So I'm gonna adjust the buttock flesh. And this time I'm gonna bring the feet onto the blankets and they could be, it could be soles of your feet or you can cross one ankle over like this. And so I'll start here and I'll go underneath just like we did before. And then I'm gonna bring the right foot over and then the left, and remember, it can even be Baddha Konasana, or you cross one over. And then I'll extend the spine and bring my forehead to my prop, either the heels or the feet or to the blanket. That's it, that's it. And you guys, this is Supta Karmasana. And you wanna roll your inner knees down, roll your inner knees down. Good, 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 good. Roll your inner knees towards your mat and your bottom kind of presses back. That's wonderful. Just a few more seconds here. And then you can go ahead and take your gaze towards your feet and we'll bring our legs, our feet down. One more. This time we'll go a little bit deeper. So bottom goes up and back. This time the feet, the legs are mat hip distance or mat distance, outer heels. Keep your toes up. I'm gonna go underneath. This time I'll take the legs a little wider. See if I can press through the knees. Your forehead can come onto your mat. The palms of your hands are against the floor. Your toes are straight up to the ceiling. So the block can be, or the, the blankets can be to the or, but you guys take your feet wider this time, maybe off of your mat slightly and bring the backs of your arms underneath your thighs. You can turn the palms down, walk the arms out and then push to straighten your knees. Keep the 10 toes facing the ceiling. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's wonderful, guys. Excelente. Karmasana. 
Perfect. And then release. Very nice. Very, very nice. Just go ahead and bring yourselves up. And I'm going to put my blankets to the side for a moment. And I'm going to do Mahamudra, which we did yesterday. And I'll show you guys. I don't know if I can breathe loud enough to show you exactly the full thing. But, but watch. You see, so there's a breath, there's a breath pattern, and this is really about the breath. So this is not Janush or Sasana where we fold. So everyone bend your right knee, and your right knee goes out to the side, and you cover the uh, back of your left thigh or your left hamstring covers your right toes, just like this. Now, if you need a strap, you'll grab your strap and wrap it around your left big toe. If you don't need a strap, reach in and wrap your fingers around your left big toe. Straighten your knee. Straighten that left knee. Straighten your elbows and lift your side ribs. Inhale, take your gaze up, but inhale through your nose. Exhale through your nose, bring your chin down. Inhale all the way through your side body. Lift your arm bones up to squeeze your ears. Hold your inhale. Exhale, shoulders down, gaze center. Inhale, take your gaze up. Exhale, bring your chin, groove of the neck. Inhale, the breath from the side ribs all the way up. Squeeze the arms around your ears, hold your inhale. Exhale, shoulders down, gaze center. Inhale, take your gaze up, lift your side ribs here. Exhale, bring only your chin down, bring your chin, groove of the neck. Inhale through your side ribs, lift your arms up to squeeze your earlobes as you inhale, hold your inhale. Exhale, shoulders down, gaze center. Release, switch side, perfect, perfect. Perfecto. So left knee bends, right leg is out in front and then you'll move that right outer hip back now, if you can, you use first two fingers to grab that right big toe or use a strap. That's it. Make this long. So you're really trying to pull your side ribs up into your armpit. Inhale, gaze up. Exhale, chin to the groove of the neck. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Lift the shoulders up to squeeze the ears. As you inhale, hold the inhale. And exhale, shoulders down, center the gaze. Inhale, gaze goes up. Exhale, the chin comes to the groove of the neck. Inhale, your breath. One long, deep inhalation as you squeeze the arms to the ears. Hold. And exhale, shoulders down, gaze center. One more. Inhale, gaze up. Exhale, chin down, sternum still lifted. Inhale, inhale, draw your arms up. Squeeze your ears as you hold your inhalation. Exhale, shoulders down, gaze center. Perfecto. And then you guys can release. Excelente. Excellent. So I'm going to take my blankets, and this can be one or two, and I still have them kind of folded. It can even be none, right, like this. And I'm going to sit in front of those blankets and take my strap. This is Baddha Konasana. And we'll just do a few rounds of Ujjayi breath before we take Shavasana. So I've got my strap in a loop. And I'm sitting in front of my blankets about a fist distance away. And I'm going to take this wide loop over my head and shoulders and then down to the lower part of my sacrum. And then I'll put that underneath my outer feet. From there, you can tighten this strap. As tight as you can have it. It may not, you know, you may need to loosen it some 
have blocks nearby in case this bothers your hips. You could place your blocks outside of your knees or outside of the lateral buttock, right? And I'll scoop forward, bend the elbows, and then I'll come recline. If you want to take that second blanket and kind of fold it up to make a little pillow for the back of your head, you can, or you can use it completely, or you can use a third blanket. Right, that's nice, guys. So once you get it, remember you want to scoop your sacrum. You want to bring your sacrum and your tailbone down. And, and for me, I, there's such unevenness between the left side and the right side. And that goes from the shoulder blade all the way down through the back of the waist. I can feel that there's a difference, right? I can feel that one side is tighter than the other. <clears throat> so once you get here, you want to make sure that you're comfortable, that your legs or your knees are comfortable, your hips are comfortable. So use any support that you would need. Because when we become physically uncomfortable, it's really hard to breathe or to focus on the breath, right? So as you get here, really let your arms move out to your sides with your palms up and go ahead and close your eyes with just an exhalation of your breath. Just an exhalation of your breath. From here, you're just going to take a few moments to notice your breath. And it's interesting because as soon as we say notice the breath, what we begin to try to do is to change the breath. So don't try to change the breath, but simply be aware of your breath. Maybe the evenness or the, the depth. No, no, bring it here. Let's see, Patty. So sit up. And then put it under your feet. Here, use this one. Because that one's kind of new, so it's it's not as warm. <laughs> oh well. Okay, make sure that your armpits are open, your shoulder blades are kind of drawing into the back at the base. There you go, there you go, there you go. Arms are out, palms up. And then let's go ahead and begin just Ujjayi one breathing. So lift your head. So here, and I'm going to use a count for just the first few rounds. So inhale your breath for a count of one. This is your inhale. Two, three, four. Hold it at the top for a second. And then exhale very slowly. Two, three, four. Again, inhale. One, two, three four, hold it at the top without stress, and exhale slowly through the nose, count of four again. Repeat this on your own, guys. You can inhale to a count of four, hold it at the top, and then exhale, same count of four. Couple rounds of this, and as you inhale, keep your abdominal wall still and drawn towards your mat. Fill your lungs with your inhalation. Remember, your lungs fill up like balloons. So when you inhale, expand the inhalation. Again, without stress. Make sure that the teeth are not clenching together at the back of the mouth or that the jaw is not squeezing together, the eyes holding themselves tightly. Just a very even inhale with your exhale with a little retention, just a slight retention of that inhale at the top. Ah. 
<sighs> and then you guys can bring yourself back to just your normal breathing. So without controlling the breath but keeping the self yourselves relaxed. Next exhalation. If you had your eyes closed, you can open your eyes very slowly. Maybe just let your gaze move to the ceiling. You can grab your yoga mat with your hands, press your elbows into your mat, and then very slowly lift yourselves up. If you were using a strap, you could take your strap off. I'm gonna straighten the knees and I'm gonna come back down for Shavasana, just recline on my blanket. But you guys can go wherever you want. You can do what I'm doing, which is just coming here for Shavasana. Or you can move to legs up the wall or legs in a chair or just lying flat on your mat without that additional blanket. Right, so any way that you'd like to take Shavasana, but take your palms up and your arms out and have this kind of opening of the chest. Really let the muscles in the face relax. Relax the eyelids and the eyeballs relax. They begin to deepen and move towards your yoga mat or your blanket. Let your tongue relax. To relax the throat, relax the voice box, and just allow these areas to become very quiet and still for a moment. Your five senses can move inward as well. Begin to deepen your breath. You can slowly move your awareness back into the room. Small movements in the fingers and in the toes when you're ready. Bend your elbows. You can bring your hands to your belly or to your heart. Stretch your arms up and over your head for full body stretch. You'll move your abdominals towards the mat. 
Release the arms to the side body. Bend your knees one knee at a time. Bring your feet onto your back. When you're ready, knees can come into the heart. Arms, wrap the arms around the knees and any movements here, side to side. Roll to the right and hold there in a fetal position, using the right arm or the right hand to support your head. And then go ahead and bring yourselves up seated here, any seated position that you would like. Hands can be heart center, third eye, or just resting at the top of your legs. Take a moment in silence. This is called the invitation. It doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for. And if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing, it doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dream, for the adventure of being alive. It doesn't interest me what planets are squaring your moon. I want to know if you have touched the center of your own sorrow. If you have been open by life's betrayals or have become shriveled and closed from fear of future pain. I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine or your own, without moving to hide it or fade it or fix it. Thank you guys very, very much. Namaste.